Hello. In this video, we'll be talking about Linux scripting. Um, so Linux scripting is a, a very powerful tool to work with the displays and uh, essentially make them do what you want, both in, you can load applications um, automatically with Linux scripts in a USB, or you can do things on startup. If you've already watched the the video about the essentially the display folder structure and files, I talked a little bit about using Linux scripts in the opt etc init.d folder for starting up certain applications and uh, doing things to configure the system at startup. So you can use Linux scripting to do uh, things like that on your own, depending on how you want your programs to behave or how you want the system configured. Um, now, Linux scripting is a pretty big, pretty, uh, there's a lot to essentially cover, more than we could cover in, in just a simple video here. So, I mean, there's a lot online about how to create Linux scripts and um you know like writing shell scripts here is a good place to start um you know talks about functions and so it, it can get pretty detailed uh so i would recommend first you know checking out some online tutorials and things in this video we're just going over some of the basics uh one of the the most useful things that people want to do on the display is when you're done developing your application, so whether it be in Codasys or Qt, a lot of times you'll want to, you know, not have to connect to every display and put your application on it or um, things like that. You, you know, you'll want to just be able to plug in, for instance, like a USB and have your application automatically update and configure the system from that. So thankfully, that's pretty easy with our cross control display systems. So that's kind of what we'll be focusing on a bit in this video, even though what we'll learn as far as Linux scripts can be applied to a lot of other areas. Um, okay, so first off, to create a Linux script, we always are going to start it out with this uh pound sign and then exclamation exclamation point and then bin bash uh so the pound sign in these scripts is a comment tag essentially so it's it's not recognized by the script it's like a comment in code um so let's let's start to do a few things in in scripting, and we can talk a little bit first about uh, how to make a script auto load. So first off, I'm using uh, a free program right now called uh, Sublime Text. It's a good text editor, but it's not necessary that you use specifically this program for. Uh, writing scripts, you can just do it in Notepad or uh, my, or uh, WordPad, any of the basic Windows programs, or uh, there's a lot of other, you know, Notepad++ is always a good text editor as well. Um, so if you want the display to auto-execute a script for you, so as I talked about a second ago, um, our displays will automatically, when you plug in a USB, look for a script file specifically named, and I'll just save this on my desktop, uh, cc-auto.sh. Okay, if this, if a file by this name is located on the root directory of a USB, it will auto execute that script file. So by doing this, this is a great way to 
for instance, load your applications automatically. Um, and in this video, we'll assume that what we've done is um, create this script file and put it on the root directory of a USB and with the script file on the root directory, there's a QT or Codesys application or uh, some images that we want to transfer over to the display. So what we can do to write this script file is assuming we put this on the root directory of the USB, uh, we plug in the USB, it's going to see a file called ccauto.sh and it will execute it and do whatever we instruct it to do in this script. So let's pretend that we wanted to copy some files over to the display. Maybe those files are like a QT folder that we've tarred up. So like the binary um, application for a QT project, we've tarred it in a folder and maybe we have some images that we want to copy over. So we can do that within this script file. So first let's start by uh, copy and extract QT application. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. Um, so the basis of writing Linux scripts is actually very similar to what we'd write in the Linux command line. If you haven't checked out the Linux command line basics video, um, I would recommend doing that if you're not too familiar with the command line. So the first thing we can do is if we want to copy a file off of the USB is we're going to use this CP command for copy. And then we tell it where we want to copy the file from. So in this instance, um, the the USB directory, when you put a USB into the display, you can look at the files located in that USB from the media slash USB directory. And let's say we have a file on there or a, a compressed folder, which we've tarred, um, called QT app folder. Okay, dot tar. Okay, so right now we're copying qt at folder dot tar from the media USB directory and we're going to copy it into our opt directory. Okay, so our first command here does that. Okay, then now that this tar file is in the opt directory, we want to go and extract that file. So we are going to move within our script into the opt directory with change directory opt. So now we're in the opt directory. And next we're going to extract that file. So we're going to say tar extract file qt app folder dot tar. Okay, so this command will then go ahead and extract that file into our op directory. So now whatever we've compressed and put on our USB within this tar folder is now copied from our USB onto whatever display we've inserted it into and extracted onto the new display. Um, so, you know, in this instance, if you've gone ahead and you have a QT application on your development display, a binary that's working and maybe it contains some other images and files in this folder, the QT app folder, and on your development display you tar it or compress it and then copy it back to your virtual machine or your Windows machine and put it on a USB. With this script, you could then stick this script in with your compressed folder called qt app folder tar and as soon as it starts up the um, the script will copy and uncompress that automatically um, okay the next thing we can do is you know copy 
uh, images. How about to the uh, to cross control images folder? Spelled that wrong. So if we had, say, uh, or a boot image, how about? So maybe in that case, we just want to, yeah, we'll copy it there. Um, so let's say we had a splash screen image that we wanted to use. So we could, again, go ahead and copy uh, from media USB, and we'll call this one splash.png. And we're going to copy that into opt uh, cross control images. All right, so it's as simple as that. So this goes ahead and copies it. If it's not compressed as a tar file, then we don't need to do anything else. We don't need to uh, uncompress it here. Um, we could set up other items or uh, you know one of the things that is helpful to do is after you're done with your script you usually want to write this sync command so this makes sure that everything that we've copied and written is written to the display and then we can say reboot and after it completes everything above, it will go ahead and reboot the display. Um, so that's a good way to tell that it's your script is completed. And also keep in mind for this cc auto.sh, this will auto execute every time the display sees it in the USB directory. So if you, for instance, run this script, it's going to run it and reboot the display. If your USB is still in the display when it reboots, it's going to look, see this file again, do it again and reboot. So you'll be in a constant uh, cycle or circle of this, doing this script and rebooting unless you remove the USB from the, the display after it's done, after it's completed. Um, you know, you can do a lot more with it. So this is just a very basic example. Um, there are other examples on our support site, though. So if you want some examples of scripts that we've written, um, you can come to the knowledge base here, for instance. And um, I believe in, for instance, I wrote one for IP address configuration. Um, so here is a, a script. We can go ahead and download it actually and take a look. Um, so here's a script that essentially configures the IP address file and that file is located in ETC networks and interfaces and it writes certain things to the file to make it either a static or dynamic IP address. Um, so this gets a little bit more complicated and you know I've commented it to let the user know what you're what it's doing. Um, but you know in this script, I essentially am checking to see if how it's currently how the file is currently written and then making changes to that file. So you're you can have your scripts make changes to files. Um, let's see if there's any other examples here. Uh, this is I believe a splash screen. So this script auto script will write um, files to, let's see. So this is again uh, a pretty simple one, but so this copies a splash screen image 
called splash screen PNG into the opt folder. And then it copies a script, which I've also included in this zip file, this splash script, um, into etc init.d and creates a symbolic link in the rc3.d folder, which points to this splash script, um, and then sync and reboot. So there are some examples on our support side of other scripts, and to give you, you know, some idea depending on what you want to do, but that's really the basics of, of scripting is in basic Linux commands and just know that you can do a lot more complicated things with, with those scripts as well. Um, yeah, I, I think that does it and definitely, you know, check out the tutorials online about, um, you know, doing more advanced things with Linux shell scripts. There's, there's really a, a lot of stuff. So more than we could cover in a video. Okay, thank you. <laughs>